If you're ready to summarize your smart suite data in new and impressive ways, you're going to love the fact that we now have pivot table features. Yes, we can now add a pivot table as a widget into our smart suite dashboards. In this video, I'm going to unpack everything you need to know about this new widget so that you can implement pivot tables and get better insights from your data. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth and this is Gap Consulting. It's our mission to help you get organized and automated getting out of spreadsheets, old, archaic technology, and getting into the future, which is no-code tech. You can build a really slick system with just a little bit of knowledge in how these tools work and automate so much in the background that you get more and more productive as the days go by. Before we jump into the actual video here, if you want to learn a little bit more about automation, take what you learn here today and really take it up and ramp it up to the next level, I invite you to join me for some free automation training. You can grab that at gapconsulting.io slash webinar dash registration. You can go ahead and sign up there and get immediate access to that training. But without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on into my screen. I'm going to walk you through how to implement and install the new pivot table widget. And we're going to do so from a template in SmartSuite. Now, if you already have SmartSuite, of course, go ahead and open this up and follow along. I'll include a link below to the template that I'm using here. Uh, if you don't already have SmartSuite, please do consider using our affiliate link, which will throw a little bit of love back to the channel. Greatly appreciated. So now that we're inside here, let's go ahead and go into templates. It really doesn't matter what you're working with in order to get started. I'm just using this as an example. Whatever data you have will be able to be merged into that pivot table. So for us, I'm going to go with an intake form. I've typed intake here into my uh, my uh, search bar. You can go ahead and search for this as well. It's the client intake, or as I said, use the link that I've shared below. This is a pretty simple uh, template here. It's just one simple table called intake. And you'll see that we've got a lot of information here, like the name of the person who filled it out, when we received it, what the status is. In fact, let's group by these different status here. I've right clicked here on the field and I'm just grouping by it so we can see all the different uh, intake you know, forms that we've received and where they are within the process. We can see the maiden name, we can see the date of birth, the sex, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of information here. Now, what I want to highlight for us, though, is in a pivot table, if we've never used one before, it's important to kind of understand what it is. Effectively, it allows us to map data and summarize it in some way, either by counting it or by evaluating some other field like uh, doing an average or taking a summation. But it allows us to categorize this information in both rows and columns and kind of analyze it and slice it up in a fancy way. So let's take, for example, we've got two different single select fields here. This one is a status field, right? And we've got a variety of different status. And then we've got the sex field here where we've got different uh, sexes, how people might identify inside of this. So we might want to take a look and see our data based on the review status and the sex of the person who's put this information in. And uh, I should point out before I move any further, this is specific to the template, but all of these different components came into existence with the template. Like once we installed this into our system uh, and into our smart suite account, we have the form, this came with it, we could update the title, but this form is part of this intake uh, template. Uh, we also have the Kanban view so we can see the different intakes that we have and they're kind of categorized by the different status. Uh, so all of this data came in. Now these are different views inside of our database. It does not change the underlying data when we put in a new view. It simply gives us a new way to see the data. And that's what we're going to be leveraging here when we work with this pivot table. So what we do is we come over here to the left side on views and we're going to go down to the bottom and select create new view. When we make this selection, if we scroll down here, these are all the different view types that we can access. At the very bottom, we will find dashboard and form. I already showed you that a form view already exists for this particular template, but it's dashboard that we want in order to implement the pivot table because it's inside of the dashboard view that we'll have control over adding different widgets. And so it's a widget that we're going to be actually putting in here to help us slice and dice our data. So let's go in 
into dashboard. We can name it whatever we'd like. Choose if we want it to be public or private. I'll let you go through these different settings. This has to do with who will be able to see this within your team and ultimately create the view. Now, once we're in here, we need to add our first widget and we can do that in one of two places. We can come down here to the middle or the bottom here. And then uh, we also have the button up here at the top. Either one of these is going to pop open this modal where we get to choose what different widgets we want to add. Now, for our example, we were looking for the pivot table. So let's find this brand new widget that SmartSuite has recently released. We can do a little search here in the search bar and we can install the pivot table widget. So the first part we're going to look at is the heading right here. So this is where we can say, uh, let's look at intakes by sex and status. We can also opt to add a description. I want to highlight for you that the description is quite robust. We can actually do quite a lot here. Let's go with uh, here is the Gap website. And I'm doing this as a very particular example because I can actually highlight this and you'll see that we can embolden, we can go with text color, we can highlight, I mean, we can go bullet, bullet list, uh, we can go numbered list, all kinds of different features. But what I want to do is actually add a link so that we can see how powerful this is this uh, is, you know, true formatting like we would get in most uh, true like word editor type places. We can also elect whether we want this to show up as a tooltip, which means we have to hover over it like this, or we can go to below the title, which is just going to put it right here. So I like this. Any changes we make to title and description are now going to show up right here. And if we were to just add this widget, now bear in mind it's not done, but if we were to add it right now, we would be able to just access these different components. Now we're going to complete the full installation here and really build out the widget. So let's collapse the heading component now that we've got our title and description and let's work on the actual data itself. This is the meat and potatoes, right? Now let's come down to the source. This is where we pick where our actual data lives that we want to put into this pivot table. Now I want to highlight for you that you can actually access data that lives in any solution. So the nice thing, one of the nice things about SmartSuite is that we can build dashboards across all of our different solutions within our workspace. So if you had information that was living in a completely different database solution, you can access that right here. Like we have access to everything. It does not have to be in this particular database. This is one of the things that makes SmartSuite really unique and in my opinion, very competitive. So of course, in this case, we're going to access our actual solution, the one that we're working with here. So I'll just skip this and I want to make sure that I'm looking at the intake table as well. So we have to select solution and table here. Note that we can also apply a filter. If we only want to analyze certain data that meets specific criteria, we can apply that filter. Anything that does not meet that criteria will not be included in our eventual pivot table. For us, I want to look at all of the data that we have because we don't have that much. It's only like 20 records or so. So I'm not going to apply a filter. I will clear this out. Now we have to set up our rows and columns. If you recall earlier, I mentioned that a pivot table is going to help us summarize this data in both rows and columns. And one of the best fields to look at for this is going to be a single select or a status field, which is, of course, the example we're building. So if I wanted to put, let's say, the sex options on rows, I can do that here. I simply expand rows and I select that field. So here it is. It's just the uh, sex as someone identified when they filled out the form. So I choose that field. I can choose to group by it or go with the value. I'm going to keep it at group and whether I want to ascend or descend the order. And this has to do with the order of the different options that we have inside of that field. So if you started out with options like one, two, three, four, ascending would put them in numeric order and then descending would put them in reverse. So that's our rows, but you'll notice that still nothing is showing up because we haven't completed the setup yet. We have to now collapse rows and let's focus on columns. And as soon as we put a column option in here, we're going to start seeing this overall pivot table take shape. So for us on the uh, columns, we're going to be looking at that status. So let's find what it's called. It's the review status. As soon as I make that selection, now we have some data to look at. So here I have the different status across the top in my columns and I have the different sex options that have been selected in the sample data. So that is what is making this up and notice that everything is kind of grouped by that. 
Now we also see that we've got a number here. And so right now, this is just kind of the default setting, which is looking at the total number of elements that are fitting in that, the total number of records that are in that intersection. So for us, if we were to you know, take an example here, we have four people who identified male that have the status of moving forward. We have one person who is identifying female, at the status of moving forward. And if we expand any one of these sections, we can see then that we have the sex, of course, that is uh, consistent down here, and then also the status that is consistent here. So it's allowing us to get a cross section of our data that meets the criteria where these two things intersect the review status and the sex in this particular case. As I mentioned, this works really well with single select fields and status fields, but you can do it with many different field types. Now, the other important takeaway is we don't have to just summarize this data with counts. That's going to be the last component here when we're building this. On the right-hand side, we can look at how we summarize the information here. And by default, as I said, we're looking at the count. But maybe we want to know something about the data, like not just how many different records meet this cross-section, but more importantly, uh, summarize the data in some way. So we can look at a field to summarize by. And let's look at the annual salary. Maybe we don't care to sum it, but we want to know the average annual salary. So what this is taking, if you recall, in this section right here, we had a count of four different uh, instances where we had intake forms that were submitted by a male that was in the status of move forward. If we expand this now, we're going to see those four still here. But what the number that shows up here is actually representing is the annual salary here, an average of that annual salary, which we see 150,000 three times with a 76,000 thrown in there. And so this average obviously is going to be just shy of 150,000, which is what we're seeing here. 131,000 is the average if we were to sum up 150,000 times three plus the 76 divided by four. Right. So that's what we're getting right here. This is the average salary of the field that we put in right here. Now, note that we also have control over whether we're ascending or descending. So for our example, we want to kind of move folks through a process. It's an intake status. Right. So we want it to be ascending. Needs review is on the left as opposed to descending where the final status is on the left. That doesn't always make a ton of sense. So you have full customization over how you're setting this up. Now that we're happy with the way this looks, let's go ahead and add the widget. And this is now inside of our dashboard. Note that we can resize it. So we can drag this across. We can uh, up, up, down on this, right? The whole bit. When we're happy with the way it looks in the upper right corner, we toggle off edit mode. And now when we come here, we are not going to see the click drag and all the lines and everything else. When it's in edit mode, we see the back end of it. We see where we can resize it. We see the, the dot matrix in the background where we see all of the uh, different components of this page layout. I don't necessarily want that when I'm working, right? So I'm going to toggle it off and set it to view. But note that as a logged in user inside of the dashboard, I can still drill into this very easily. All I need to do is expand on these different sections and I can see a list of all of the data that is made up in that cross section. So that's it for pivot tables now available in Smart Suite. I know we went really quickly in this video, so if you have additional questions anywhere that we can help out, feel free to swing by our website. We've got a ton of free resources and some paid services as well. Of course, if you got value from this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, remember to keep on building.